On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have news of a potential New York State record white perch caught. I've got some cod and some freshwater reports. We have the winner of the Berkeley giveaway and another giveaway. Another whale has watched up and our correspondents check in from around the island and beyond. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. It's the all-new Freeport Fishing and Boating Show, February 18th and 19th. Get your fishing and boating season started with over 50 exhibitors and seminars from pro anglers. Fun for the whole family. For more information and advanced ticket discounts, visit FreeportFishingShow.com to be part of the fun. Today's Thursday, February 16th, and we have news of another whale that is washed up. So is this part of the Biden initiative of more wind farms? One side is saying that the sonar that the survey vessels are using are to blame. It has to be 100% looking at everything that is going on in the region um, and considering each of them a plausible cause. Um, that includes all the extensive surveying activities um, being done by companies in preparation for offshore wind projects, uh, which number hundreds um, off the coast. Uh, we have hundreds of windmills that are being proposed with various projects. Each of those companies are doing geophysical surveys of the ocean using sonar, um, which affects the sound in the ocean and the animals that use sound to live in the ocean and, for, and have for millennia. So these companies that are doing these activities have federal permits uh, for the activities because they are harassment uh, authorizations. These harassment authorizations are authorizing harm to marine mammals, thousands of them. Others say the whale deaths have nothing to do with the construction of offshore wind farms. So again, NOAA is a science-based agency, and currently there is no evidence to indicate that the wind farms have any contribution to the whale deaths. Whatever the reason may be, this issue needs to be fully investigated before proceeding any further. What's your opinion? Please leave a comment below. Kind of along the lines of the same topic, I got an email that crossed my desk last week about the incidental take authorization for the Sunrise Wind Farms off Long Island. Th this essentially means that a certain number of marine animals are allowed to be killed during the construction of these structures due to pile driving and ex explosive ordinance. The public has the ability to comment up until March 12th. See the link below for the proposed rule and public comment section. This past weekend, a potential New York State record white perch was caught from a South Shore Tidal River. I gave Jeff Buda, who caught the 3.06 pounder, a call for some of the details. Jeff said while he did have his boat out that day of the catch, he docked it up at his friend's place and took a few casts off the dock for fun, where he actually hooked the perch. The bait he caught it on was a piece of night crawler on a jig head. Jeff followed up by letting me know that they had 40 perch on the day and even more on the next day with small stripers mixed in. He also mentioned the incoming tide was most productive and using the lightest tackle possible did make a big difference. The fish was weighed in on a certified scale at Saltwater's Bait and Tackle in West Islip. Jeff, excellent job on this great catch. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcast. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. In other news, mark your calendars because there will be a public hearing on February 27th to decide the final 2023 regulations on CBAS. I strongly urge that you get involved and attend this meeting in person or through the online portal. See the link in the description for all the details. Now it's time for some reports on cod and freshwater. Captain Ray from the King Cod and Mauritius reported a slight uptick in action on Sunday's cod fishing trip. They only made a couple of drops, cracking skimmers and patiently waiting. But by the day's end, 14 of their anglers boxed right around two dozen keeper cod, releasing some shorts and a handful of blackfish. Most of the cod were nice green swimmers new to the area, according to the captain. They will not be fishing again until they see a good weather day. I got another report from Ken over at Tight Lines Tackle in Sag Harbor. He fished Kaler's Pond with his friend Kevin on Tuesday, and he went middle to trout fishing was great for rainbow and brown trout with plenty of action the entire time. Ken said, and I quote, I was using a daredevil while Kevin was using a blue and silver castmaster. Keep in mind, Ken is very knowledgeable on saltwater fishing too, and you can go see him at his shop in Sag Harbor Thursday through Sunday this time of the year. Captain John Padawanu from Fish and Light Charters reported that he fished Kennequat State Park last weekend. 
and he had excellent action with plenty of brook trout and some pretty big rainbow trout, up to 10 pounds to be exact, using helgramites and pheasant tails. He said the key was changing flies every three or four fish. Last week's giveaway of the Berkeley Lures went to Patrick Hughes with his weak fish. Hopefully, we have another good year with them. Pat, your package is being sent out to you in the mail. Now, this week, we have another giveaway, which includes more Berkeley Lures, soft baits from Savage, and mini bucktails from Spro. Please send your best striped bass photos this week to mbroderick at thefisherman.com for another random selection. Now time for the events. We start off with the news that there will be no Rockland County, also known as the Suffering Show this year, but it will return next January at the Edison Convention Center in New Jersey. Edison is still going on for March 17th through 19th this year. Now this Saturday, I will be at the New Jersey Surf Day Show and working the booth and giving a seminar on compact fluke fishing. Then Sunday, I will be at the Freeport Fishing and Boating Show behind the booth giving a seminar on shorebound togging. If you're at either of these, come and say hello. These are both great shows with great deals on tackle and gear, plus excellent seminars. Don't forget when you're at one of the shows to renew your subscription to the Fishery Magazine and get a package of BKK hooks and fish bites for a new subscription or renewal. And being a subscriber allows you to enter the Dreamboat Contest and our Coastal Kayak Clash. I do hope to see you there. And for all you tuna enthusiasts out there, Canyon Runner will be holding their tuna seminar on March 4th at Captain Bill's in Bayshore. Tickets are $120 per person. Call 732-272-4445 or email info at canyonrunner.com. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Later in the broadcast, Paul will show us how to tie another fly. Hello, Matt. Well, here I am. I'm actually enjoying this day. Can you believe it? It's 50 degrees today. I should be out fishing, but I'm not. And why? Because Kenny and I have been working all day, working on our Fly Fishing Expo of Long Island. It's going to be a phenomenal show. We're working really hard. March 25th, I hope you come. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Now, as far as fishing goes, I've had reports of guys going out to the Connect Corner of coursing big fish. More importantly, a lot of guys have been going upstate and fishing the Croton system and fishing some of the, surprisingly, it's getting some very nice, nice trout in, the, in some of these tailwaters that are coming out of the reservoirs in Westchester and Putnam County. And then I've heard and understand the Farmington is fishing well in Connecticut. Uh, the Catskills, when the water's down enough to fish, it's been pretty good. But until, uh, until we get really nice warm weather, I don't know. I think, I think with this, we're, we're predicting to have 50 degrees days for the next few weeks. I think the bay is going to warm up. I wouldn't be surprised if the middle of March and towards the end of March, we're going to start seeing stripers back here again. Can't wait for that. Well, I really should be. I don't know why I didn't go fishing today, but I hope you did. And until next week, tie lines, everybody. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, still struggling through the offseason. Toughest stretch, obviously, post-Super Bowl until his first pass arrived. But with these mild temps, uh, a couple of guys that I know got out in the back bays over the weekend and uh, got into a couple of small, very small stripers with a super low speed retrieve, you know, with small paddle tails, like quarter, three-eighths of an ounce jig head. So, um, you know, that could be an idea and, you know, keep on keeping on with, you know, working on that gear, getting those you know, back troubles off, putting on a single hook or a flag. And, um, you know, hopefully soon enough they'll be here. We'll uh, see a lot of people say that, you know, if you don't have a very cold winter and you don't have a very wet spring, it's not great for the spawn. I know there's a lot of debate going on with the uh, commercial quota transfer, a lot of the public comment kind of being ignored. And uh, they haven't made a decision yet, but um, that they didn't keep it at status quo. That's the ASFM, ASFMC. Um, a little discouraging, but um, well, I'm sure we'll hear more about it down the road. Um, still trying to figure out casting the fly rod. Excited to uh, get out to Connecticut State Park this weekend um, with Paul and, uh, you know, have him fine tune me and get me ready for battle. So, uh, so that's it for now. Uh, stay sane. They'll be here soon enough to catch. All right. Back to you, Matt. Thanks. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, uh, Fire Island report here. Not much to report, but 
a good amount of, of white perch around up in the local creeks, uh, Argyle Lake in the basin, uh, and some of the other behind Taco Bell, Connecticut River, if you have access there. Remember, if you're fishing in tidal zones, you have to have a marine fishing license, which is free and you can get it online. Just a reminder about that. And uh, Sea Run Rainbows up in Connecticut State Park, that's another possibility. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, a couple of things to do. A couple of warm days have happened, so everybody's getting spring fever, waiting to get out there. My boat should be up and running beginning of April, and uh, that's it. We look forward to the spring and another fishing season. Let's check in with Chris Landry from down south, getting it done. Thanks, Matt. Good news. The bass are back. They are coming in. Mike from Frank's Fish Club banged a bunch of bass last night, including four slots. Uh, he's also planning another trip to Panama, March 23rd to 29th. So hit up Mike from Frank's Fish Club if you want to go on that trip and bang yellowfin tuna on top water. Um, speaking of which, around the globe, I've been uh, in Miami where I went on a bender. I caught a giant uh, amberjack, caught some blackfin tuna, hooked up to kingfish, even got my first peacock bass uh, when it was blowing too hard to go out. Um, that was exciting. And two of the Brooklyn anglers, Frankie Shane and Carl Newman, went to La Paz, Mexico, where they were banging rooster fish on top water. They got into an epic feed. Um, so get out there around the world while you can, because the bass are coming back. My man Harold went out this weekend for cod. He said the ocean was filled with life, seals, dolphin, whales, herring, bunker. So we're predicting a, a, an, an early return of these bass and another epic season. So get your gear ready. Thank you, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. Let's check in with David Rogers. Dave. Thank you, Matt, and howdy y'all from Austin, Texas. Now I'm here for the weekend and I had to make sure to get some fishing in. So the first thing I did was check out Google Maps for close by ponds and creeks and ended up here at Barton Creek. Barton Creek is connected to the Colorado River and is a great spot for fishing a variety of freshwater species, including largemouth bass, bluegills, a variety of catfish, carp, and more. The creek has thick vegetation at times, so it was crucial to use a weedless setup similar to this one. The key to finding a bite was allowing the lure to sink in between the vegetation and hopefully enticing the fish hiding in there. Luckily using this technique, I was able to land a beautiful Texas bass of my own. One of the greatest parts of fishing, for me personally, is being able to travel anywhere and discover what fishing opportunities are around. And Austin, Texas does not disappoint. If you want to see all my Texas fishing adventures, check out Funky Fishing on YouTube for more in-depth videos. Spring season on Long Island is just around the corner, so get those reels spooled and hook sharpened. Back to you, Matt. Captain Mike Century is here with some info about a seminar he will be presenting this upcoming weekend. Thanks, Tim and Matt. Hope all is well. Well, guys, here goes. Getting close to the season. Mike Century here for Angles of Legend Sport Fishing Boat Works. Here to tell you, this Saturday, 4 o'clock p.m., I'll be doing the uh, tuna inshore grounds and offshore grounds fishing seminar at the Edison Convention Show and Boat Show. It's actually the Boat Show. So it's going to be uh, pretty interesting. So 4 p.m., I'll be there pretty much all day hanging out with guys and talking and, you know, talking up a storm, giving some tips and stuff like that, and checking out some boats. So um, check me out, Edison Boat Show, Saturday, 4 p.m. I'll be there with uh, Jim Hutchinson Jr. and uh, a bunch of other people giving out seminars and some goody things from uh, Sterling uh, Tackle, one of our sponsors, Hoagie Tackle, uh, who else? A couple of other people. And um, yeah, um, looking forward to it. With that said, I'm going to give you guys a little tip of what the weather patterns right now. It's very important. I look, I'm a big weather guy. I like to keep a track of everything that's going on with the uh, weather and currents and water temps, seasonal changes and differences and variations. So I will say this, the last time, about three years ago, 2020, we had an epic run of, of bluefin and yellowfin near grounds. So the way it's looking right now with the seasonally warm uh, winter we had, it's gonna be a very productive offshore grounds. But before we get to the offshore grounds, it's kind of dire for striped bass. Striped bass tend to leave the bay, Raritan Bay, Jamaica Bay, when the water gets, you know, somewhere in the 60s, mid 60s uh, temperature range, they pretty much flutter out and, you know, head up north. So I got a feeling the bass run this year is gonna be quick. 
It's going to be a blowout, pretty much a bonanza of blitzes everywhere. And it's going to be short and sweet. So the temperatures that we have in right now, February, are a little bit crazy. Going into March, 60-day weather forecast, you're looking 60s, 70s. Only at nighttime, it drops down to about 35, 32. So sharpen your hooks, get your real service, your rod straight, make sure there's no cracks in the guides or anything. And get ready, it's going to be an epic season. Uh, with that said, uh, enjoy seeing you guys or everywhere I go, whether I'm fishing, chartering, or fixing boats. And uh, like I said, see you guys Saturday. We'd we'll love to see some of you guys on the uh, on the grounds over there at the Edison Boat Show. So God bless and tight lines. Lastly, we check in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hey there guys, this is Ben Gilmore checking in from Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. The offshore bite right now has been really good. We've got plenty of sailfish out there, mainly 30 to 40 miles out at the moment, the sailfish bite. We've got blue marlin. The blue marlin bite's been good. Sun trips, we're seeing one to three blue marlin, which has been nice. And there's been some real big black marlin over our offshore reefs. Quite a few fish caught over 500 pounds in the last week or two. Inshore, we've had some snook, and snapper close to the river mouths and some really nice rooster fishing going on as well at the rocks. I've had a couple of roosters close to 45, 50 pound over the last week or two. Guys, we'd love to see you down here in Costa Rica. This is Ben Gilmore handing back to you, Jackpot Sport Fishing. The Fisherman Magazine has launched their apparel store. We have hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts all online now and free shipping with orders over hundred bucks. It's the perfect gift for yourself or for the angler in your life. Visit thefisherman.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. We hope to see you right here next week at thefisherman.com, and don't forget to send in those giveaway photos. Well, Matt, you know, we got a, we had a, another, we have another great fly. This one is really good for this time of year because you're getting a lot of midges now. On a day like this today, it was 50 degrees. You're out there on the stream, you're going to start seeing midges. You might even see some little black stones. And a perfect little fly to catch them is called a WD 40. Now, it is a tiny fly, and this is actually not that tiny. <laughs> This one is actually a size 18. I like to tie it in 18s. I like to tie it in 20s and 24s. Um, it's a, it's a really is a cool fly. It works very well, especially for those picky, picky, picky trout. And we got a lot of them. But if you got some of these in your box, you're definitely going to catch some uh, in the winter. It's a great winter fly. It's a great spring fly. So let's get to the vice and tie them up. It's a real easy pattern. It's called the WD. 40. So let's get to the vise. Matt, like I said, this is an easy fly. It catches fish unbelievable. Now, this is a size 18, and this is the largest I would tie it in. I usually tie them in 18s, 20s, 22s, and 24s. I use sometimes a straight hook, straight shank hook like this, or I'll use a nymph, uh, like a scud type of hook that has a little curve to it. Either way, the fish love them and let's get to tying it i'm going to use a 70 denier like an olive color uh, thread i'm going to use a little uh this is a little flank feather it's a it's a mallard dyed wood duck the name of this fly is called the uh, wd-40 and i'm also going to use a little bit of dubbing the WD-40 stands for wood duck, but I like to say my wood ducks are kind of pricey, so I use them for wings on dry flies. So let's get to it. Very simple fly. I'm gonna attach my thread. Pull off some fibers from my mallard. And I'm going to make a couple of loose wraps. That way I can adjust my 
tail it's a little long so I can pull it back that's good a little bit shorter okay that's good yep that looks good I'm gonna hold it because I want to keep it on top of the shank just like that that's what I want now I'm gonna work up forward I want to crowd the eye leave plenty of room there I'm gonna go down covering the whole body with his olive yarn I I'm sorry olive thread I'm gonna go down now two-thirds and then back up and I'm gonna go down one third then back up what that does is gives me a nice little carrot shaped body I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing and we'll, you don't need too much because there's not that much uh we don't have to dub that much just want to make a nice ball for a thorax I'm going to put a little bit more on. And then have my thread right behind it. And pull this over top. And grab it. Just like that. And I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to take a couple wraps and cut it off. And that's it. There's not much to this fly. I know it's small, and you ask, well, would this catch the big fish? Well, think of this. Elephants eat peanuts. So get out there, tie up a bunch of these. This time of year where you got midges, you got uh, blue wing olives are starting to pop. Anything that's tiny like this, it's going to work. I use it as a dry. Sometimes I use it... Uh, you know, just below the surface as an emerger. Sometimes I put it as an, an indicate, you know, part of my niffing rig. So get out there where you can, tight lines, and I'll see you next week.